Hello friends, welcome again to the next part of Lino and Gauze Weaving Lecture. As, uh, as we have already discussed about the definitions of uh, Lino weaving and gauze fabrics, uh, if to summarize the most basic point is that the uh, in lino weaving the weft yarn is locked or held in between the half twist of standard and crossing warp yarns like here we can see uh, these uh, weft yarns are locked in or held in between the half twist of this standard yarn and crossing yarns okay and uh, we had discussed about the two basic principles of uh, lino weaving like if either like either the standard yarn can form the top shed or the standard yarn can form the form the bottom shed here in this case the standard yarn is forming the bottom shed and crossing yarn is forming the top shed whereas in these two diagrams the uh, standard yarn is forming the top shed and crossing yarn is forming the bottom shed okay if the standard yarn is forming the bottom shed then this mechanism is called bottom duping okay like the crossing yarn has to go from the bottom of the standard yarn and if this standard yarn forms the top shed then this mechanism is called top duping and as the bottom duping is much more convenient hence it is mostly preferred so uh, now on uh, we will discuss about the bottom duping only okay we also discussed about these two structures c and d structures like in c both the yarns are equally tensed or uh, supplied from the same warp beam and whereas in d the uh, crossing yarn is slightly uh, less tensed so it is supplied from the another warp beam now we have understood that the crossing yarn may be required to form the shed either on one or on the other side of the standard yarn okay like if uh, either the crossing yarn form the shed on the left side of the standard yarn or on the right side of the standard yarn in order to achieve this each crossing end must be controlled by two heels and the males of which are placed one on either side of the standard end of the corresponding standard end okay like if this crossing end is corresponding for the this standard yarn then there must be two heel frames males or heel eyes of these two heel frames must be placed on either sides like one on the left side of this standard yarn and one on the right side of the standard yarn in order to prevent the unnecessary see sewing of the crossing yarns against the standard yarns upon the alternate shed formations the dual heel control over the crossing end is not direct but through an uh, intermediary of a uh, third element which is known as dupe okay uh, so uh, each crossing end is controlled by three elements there must be two heel frames and one dupe corresponding to each crossing yarn okay and the standard yarn is as usually controlled by only one heel frame now the crossing end may be drawn through from the warp beam to the front of the loom either on the left side or on the right side of the standard ends okay if you can see here uh, if initially if initially this standard yarn is on the right uh, right side of the crossing yarn okay like when we are drawing then uh, the standard yarn is on the right side of the corresponding crossing yarn or there may be a scenario where the crossing yarn is on the left side of the uh, sorry crossing yarn is on the right side of the standard yarn while drawing initial drawing okay as we can see 
like if you see here in these two diagrams uh, in diagram C the standard yarn is on the left side of the crossing yarn whereas in E the standard yarn is on the right side of the crossing yarn otherwise these both fabrics are pretty same similar now suppose that the uh, crossing yarn is on the left side of the standard yarn then when the first pick when in the first pick when the uh, crossing yarn is lifted on its natural side that is left side then this shed is called open shed okay and uh, if this crossing yarn forms the shed on the other side of the standard yarn like as, uh, like we can see in the diagram b here the crossing yarn forms the shed on the right side of the standard yarn which is b then this shed is called crossing shed or crossed shed okay and in some cases if we need to lift the standard yarn then this type of shed is called plain shed okay so we have three type of sheds this is open shed wherein the crossing yarn forms the shed in the natural side okay and this cross shed where the uh, crossing yarn forms the shed on the crossed over side or the other side of the standard yarn and here when the standard yarn is lifted up and crossing yarn is forms the bottom shed okay this is called plain shed in crossed shed uh, we required some additional length of the crossing yarn okay so to do that we require an additional operation of an easer there is a, a element called easer which provides some additional temporarily additional length to form the crossed shed now as we have discussed in previous video also there are these five methods of producing the lino structures okay uh, first one is the flat loop with an eye second flat steel loop with an slot third is gauze and tug reed mechanism fourth is eyed needle and slider frame devices fifth is rotating bobbin and gear dismounting in this video we will discuss only about the flat steel loop with an eye this first methods this assembly consists of three elements mainly uh, one is dupe wire or dupe needle and there are two heels this is h1 and this is h2 healed 2 okay uh, if uh, this is combined assembly if you can see here there are two heels and in between this is the dupe wire if you can see here the d d part okay and uh, this is the cross section view of the healed each heel frame okay as you can see here there are two needles or two steel uh, flats which are welded in between okay so this slot uh, this dupe uh, is placed in this slot this empty slot between these two wires okay so uh, this one leg of the dupe is placed in one slot of healed and other leg is placed in other slot of other healed okay so h1 and as we can see here uh, there is an eye in the top portion of this dupe and uh, because of this eye only uh, this method is somewhat limited in terms of uh, figuring capacity so uh, this is mainly used for uh, industrial uh, fabric productions or uh, plain fabrics however uh, however this can be uh, clubbed with the any other view to generate uh, some special effects now each of these heel wires h1 and h2 are controlled by their uh, respective heel frames and uh, 
this dup wire or dup is uh, connected through uh, from this bottom portion to a reversing mechanism a spring loaded reversing mechanism to ensure the return of this dup after each lift okay so each of these uh, heels is uh, capable of lifting this dup and uh, as we can see here uh, as we have already discussed about the open shed crossing shed and plane shed in this first diagram o uh, we can see this is the open shed as as we can see here that this uh, uh, crossing end passes from the right side of the standard end and in this right side position only this is lifted and uh, um, shed is formed so this is called the open shed whereas in x as we can see that this crossing shed forms the shed on the left side of the standard end okay and if we can see here that this c heel frame c which uh, uh, controls the crossing end is lifted in this open shed and the heel frame s which controls the standard end is in the bottom position whereas in the crossed shed position the heel frame c and s both are in the bottom position whereas heel h1 h1 is lifted to form the crossed shed and this action of uh, transfer of the crossing end to the left side of the standard end is assisted by the simultaneous operation of the easer to provide the extra length of the yarn necessary to compensate for the crossover this crossover okay and uh, heel frame c remains in the bottom position in this in fact this uh, uh, heel frame c can be completely omitted but it was uh, seen that without this the sawing action of this uh, crossing and against the standard and uh, and was much more severe so it was uh, it is nowadays a practice common practice to use these both heel frames c and s s is obviously uh, compulsory to uh, control the uh, standard yarn so and in diagram p we can see that uh, this is plain view where uh, uh, only standard yarn standard heel is lifted so uh, standard yarn is in lifted position whereas all the elements controlling the crossing yarn are in the bottom position okay also we can see here that the crossing yarn is controlled by mainly five elements these two heel frames one dup one this uh, crossing heel and one easer to ease this uh, operation or to temporarily provide some additional length to compensate for the crossover okay whereas this uh, standard yarn is controlled only by the one heel frame which is uh, s here if we can see in this diagram this is a weave repeat so uh, this first pick is open pick then crossing crossed shed then open shed crossed shed open shed plain shed open shed plain shed open shed and crossed shed okay and uh, these are the heel frames h1 h2 c s and e is the easier now to understand this uh, movement of uh, these two heel frames h1 and h2 and dupe to transfer this uh, crossing end from the left side to the right side of this st uh, standard end suppose this is h2 this one is h1 heel frame h1 and this is our dupe dupe wire okay and this red color is the cross crossing yarn and uh, green is the standard yarn so if we see from this uh, animation pardon me for uh, this <laughs> very bad animation as we can see here this h1 is lifted and h2 remains in the same position as you can see here okay now if we see how this is transferred to the other side 
in this operation as you can see now h2 is lifted up and h1 remains in this bottom position only and as h1 is h2 is lifted it brings along with it this do and hence the crossed yarn okay and the standard yarn remains in the bottom position if you want to see it again this is when the crossed yarn is on the left side of the standard yarn this green one is standard yarn and this is the crossed yarn okay and here h1 lifts the dupe wire and h2 remains in the bottommost position only in the next pick h2 is lifted and h1 remains in the bottom position so h2 brings along with it the dupe wire and the standard yarn remains in the bottom position which comes in the left side of crossed yarn that's all for today thank you friends and uh, if you have any doubt then feel free to comment in the comment box and uh, if you want me to make any other video on any other topic related to textiles please comment 